active. So um, uh, ABC is an uh, acute triangle with circumcenter O uh, and orthocenter H. Um, So yeah, I actually memorized a problem from the I mock. Um, so we can use that one. Um, let me um, do this. So O is the center of C and H is the ortho center. There we go. Uh, M is the midpoint of BC. Uh, N is the reflection of H over A. Interesting. I, I haven't seen like a reflection like that too many times before. So I will call that N. And uh, P is the midpoint of NM. Interesting. So let me draw in a few more things. Uh, this is P. And X is a point on AH such that MX is parallel to CH. Um, so basically I wanna take the perpendicular um, because CH is perpendicular to AB. So let's draw this point. So, um, so this is X right here. Um, I might as well draw that altitude, right? Yeah, I wish there was a way to just draw altitudes, but I don't think there is in GeoGebra. Um, you have to do it annually. Okay. So prove that BX and OP are perpendicular. Oh, uh, this looks like just like similar triangles maybe or spiral similarity, if I had to guess. Uh, we wanna show BX and OP are perpendicular. Um, interesting. So, a, so AP is parallel to HM um, and HM, we know some stuff about that line, right? Uh, so, so AP is parallel to HM and if we reflect A over O, so we let A prime be the antipode, then we know H, M, and A prime are collinear. Uh, that's like a well-known theorem. Uh, maybe A, M is parallel to O, P. Uh, maybe A, M is parallel to O, P. I don't think so. Um, 
because now um, how did you check it? I didn't understand. Oh, um, so OP intersects AM. But it almost yeah, yeah. Like... not a prime M. Oh, uh, my bad. So then I think you might be right. That was my mistake. Um, is OP parallel to AM? Let me move things around. Actually, let, let me draw them both as lines instead of segments. That usually helps determine it. Uh, hmm. It does look like they're parallel. I'll move it around a little bit, but uh, yep, they look certainly look parallel. Okay, um, let's check the chat. Oh, I missed that someone was waiting to enter um, because OP bisects AN. Uh, since a n equals e times o m, or two, two times o m. Yeah. Okay. Or, or I think you mean a h. A a h is two o m, and a h is the same as a n. So yes, that is correct. All right. So a m is parallel to o p. So we want to show AM and BX are perpendicular. And uh, is that, is, is X the orthos? Yeah, X is the orthos center of ABM. Yep, so these are, are probably a little too easy, um, but I will move on to the IMOC problem. So there's one IMOC problem that I've really wanted to solve for a while. It's uh, really difficult. So let's see if we can, um, attempt it today um so the left unproven or the center of def in the last session yeah yeah that one that was the one i was thinking of yeah the ortho center of def so let's uh it seems let's, really hard yeah no i agree um do you want to work do you want to do that one yeah we can solve it all right um Okay, so for this problem, um, so OP, um, hold on just a sec. Let, let OP cut A, A, N, yeah, because, yeah, basically OP will bisect A, N. Um, And, and that's how we get, yeah, I had it in my brain. I just forgot it. Why is F the midpoint of AN? Um, so OM, so AH is twice OM. That's a well-known lemma. Um, and, and AH is equal to AN. So, oh, okay, I see. so, um, but. OM is parallel to NF. Yeah, yeah, because uh, AH is um, double OM. So AN is double OM. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we got. Uh, so, yeah. so since P is the midpoint of M N, um, yeah. then that has to be a a, a, a so parallelogram. So F B O is a uh, collinear. So and um, F B is uh, parallel to A M because P is the midpoint of M N and uh, F the midpoint of N I. Yes. All right, so 
Yeah, so that's why um, that's why BX and OP, or that's why AM and OP are parallel. Yeah, so um, I, I th can I delete point A prime? I think I can. I don't think we need point A prime, right? I'm gonna delete it for now. Um, let, let OP meet a N at F. Um, by a well-known theorem, uh, Um, we have AH is equal to 2 OM. And so that means that AN is equal to 2 OM. Um, and um, NP is equal to PM and OM is, is parallel. Um, So I'll say PM and then NA is parallel to OM. So that means that OM, um, OM equals NF. Um, and, and OM OM is 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 a uh, half of AN. So um, so so that 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 means that AF is half of AN is OM. Is a little clunky, but so if, if NF is half of AN, then AF is half of AN. So N. And so uh, OF is parallel. Um, so that means that OP is parallel to AM. And uh, if OP is parallel to AM, um, we can show that X is the ortho center of BAM. So, um, wait, yeah. So, And that means that um, BX is perpendicular to AM. And that means that BX is perpendicular to OP. And that solves it. All right, so now we will move on to the hard problem. So we have a little over an hour. Let's see if we can solve this problem from the IMOC. I see a few more people have also joined. Um, so thanks everyone who for participating. Um, and let me do this last problem. Uh, oops, sorry. Bad. Uh, okay. So first, I'm going to draw it, and then I could type the problem statement. Um, but this one, this one is from the IMOC. 
Uh, so the Taiwan IMO training. Uh, so we have a triangle and we draw, um, first we draw the, the ortho center and the circumcenter. Um, so I'll let O be the circumcenter. Oops, that didn't work. And H the ortho center. And H is, there's the ortho center. And then we draw the three uh, angle bisectors. Um, and we get a triangle DEF. And I is the in the center, oops. All right, so uh, this will be D, E, F, and then I is the in center. And then we, we um, I think X is the ortho center of D, E, F, and then And we want to show IX is parallel to OH. Let's see. So how do, um, so I'm gonna hide a couple things here. Then I'm gonna paste the problem statement in just for you guys to see it. Um, Yeah, it would be really cool if we end up solving this today. Actually, you know what? Let me label the midpoints of, of these arcs just because I think it might be good later. Um, all right. And X is the ortho center of DEF. And we want to show IX is perpendicular to OH. Uh, let me copy the problem statement. So whoops. Here we go. Let's see. Uh I think it's like a G5, yeah, here it is, okay. All right. I think it's, uh, was it 2015? Let's see, it's uh, 2018 IMOC G5. Training. So, um, it's gonna make it look nice, but yeah, I think you guys get get the rest of it. All right. It's a short statement, but um, it's a hard problem. Okay, let me maximize. And let me close out of this. So yeah, we wanna show IX, sorry, I'm just gonna make this look a little nicer.
All right. So that is the problem and it's a tricky one. All right. So OH is the Euler line, right? So there's the centroid also lies on that line um, and the nine point center also lies on that line. So instead of OH, we could say OG where G is the centroid or that's some other point. Uh, Yeah, I just don't know how to use that X as the ortho center of DEF. Just seems really hard. Let's see. So yeah, how do we use that X as the ortho center of DEF? Um, so we have two different ortho centers. Um, And, and yeah, maybe it's worth drawing the in circle. Um, let's see, someone, uh, can, can everyone hear me? Uh, hold on one sec. All right. I can hear you. All right. Uh, let me draw the in circle. On just a second. And I was wondering, we can kind of, so any ortho center, you can turn it into a circumcenter. I'm not sure how useful this is. Um, but let's say we, um, if we draw the perpendicular from D to AG and E to BJ and F to CK, uh, we get this other triangle and X is the uh, circumcenter of that triangle. Um, so I was thinking maybe, oh wait, Does that work? thought it would. Um, hold on, I think I, I think I messed up somewhere. Oh, whoops. No, actually what we want It has to be the perpendicular to, to um, okay. So, so actually it's really this. We draw the parallel through D to EF, through E to DF, and through F to DE. Oops. And then X is the circumcenter of that triangle. So, So maybe uh, if X is the center of that circle and I is the center of this circle, then IX is the line connecting two centers. 
I really don't know if this helps, but yeah, I was just trying a whole bunch of stuff. And but yeah, I'm gonna undo all that. I'm kind of skeptical that that helps. So yeah, what do we do with the triangle DEF? It's just the really um, the ortho center of that triangle. I've never seen a problem. Uh, okay, I see someone just is joining us. Um, so uh, thanks for joining James. Let's see if he's on yet. Uh, I know hey, that maybe uh, maybe it's cool. Uh, uh, what did you say? Uh, uh, I know a lemma that can be useful. If IA is the AX center, then IAO is perpendicular to EF. Ah, I feel like that has a good chance of being helpful. So, so, so we could draw the X centers. Um, so let me draw the circumcircle BIC. And It makes some more room here. Yeah, there have been some problems I've seen with like thing, yeah, where you have the X center and you like connect it to EF. I forgot about those problems. Um, but so, so what were you saying about the X center? If it's IA, then um, what were you thinking? IAO is perpendicular to EF. Interesting. I did not know that. So And that, so yeah, so that could help us. Um, yeah, I wonder if we, if we draw all three X centers, it, they don't form a triangle similar to DEF, right? Um, I don't think so, but we do have this property. So yeah, maybe we could try like Desargues theorem or something. Because the triangle with the three X centers, it's perspective to DEF, right? Um, hmm. Uh, I'm trying to make it look nice again. Let me just go back a couple steps.
That looks better. Yeah, I wonder if there's just some trick with homothetes that would that would do it. So I was thinking, what if instead of H, what if we use like the centroid? Um, maybe inversion helps. Could inversion make X like a better point? I'm not sure. G5, with G5, that part, it shouldn't be actually. Oh, uh, what? G5 must be, I think, easy. So maybe we are missing something easy. Maybe, yeah. Uh, is there a way, yeah, maybe Desargs? Yeah, how would we show it? I wish I could, I wish I could show, like, is there a homothety? Maybe I could I could take the cent the cent the homothety that takes the in circle to the circumcircle, um, and I could see where x where it takes x because it takes i to point o, and then I could let it take x to x prime, and then I could try to show that um, h x prime and uh, Yeah, I don't know if it would help to draw the nine point circle. Because um, yeah, H is the center of a homothety um, taking the nine point circle to the circumcircle, right? And You know what, maybe I could draw, is there anything special about like the nine point circle of DEF? So, so, a, so X, so a homothety about X takes the nine point circle of DEF to the N circle and a homothety about H takes a nine point circle of ABC to the, to the circumcircle. So maybe those two facts, um, would help us. I'm gonna try that. So, let's see, what's the fastest way to draw um, the nine point circles? So that's one nine point circle. And then that's another nine point circle. And so homothety about H takes this circle to the big circle. And a homothety about X takes that circle to the um, takes this circle to the N circle. Uh oh, not to the N circle, to the circumcircle of BEF. 
Uh, that makes things a little more confusing. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that. I don't want to make it look like X lies on the circle. Make it look like that too. So I think there's a certain theorem, like about if, if you let EF cut the circle at two points, um, I think there's some theorem about these two points. And like if you draw the tangent to the X circle, let's see. I wonder if uh, let's try this. No. Huh. I know there's some something special about points L and M. Um, and I know it's not easy to prove. So if, if, if IAO is perpendicular to EF, then it bisects LM, right? Let me draw the, oh, I think it has to do with the common tangents to these two circles. Um, oh, this isn't, I'm sorry, this isn't the X circle. This is uh, the circumcircle BIC. So if, I, if, if we draw the X circle, um, So I'm gonna draw the X circle. And then, I, and then you draw the common tangents to the X circle. Um, so that's the X circle. Now, Yes, so L and M are, are the points of tangency of the common tangents between the X circle and the circumcircle of ABC. So that's a theorem. Um, I don't remember the exact proof, but I, I saw it before. I think we posted it on Discord. Um, I'm not sure how much that really helps, but maybe it does, who knows?
Yeah, this one feels really hard. But yeah, and, um, we have a lot of people on, but yeah, no one is sure. So yeah, maybe I'll spend another five more minutes on this and then we could look for other problems. Um, maybe another 10 minutes actually. Let's have a little fun with it. We, need, we just need to get point X to a better, yeah, we need to, to, to get point X better. What if we do a homophony about I? Um, I'm not sure what the factor would be, but yeah, I wanna take X to a different point. So one thing I didn't mention is KJ is the perpendicular bisector of AX and KG. So Yeah, I want a homophony, but a homophony of the triangle DEF about I. I feel like that would help a lot. Um, I'm just not sure what ratio it should be. Well, wait a sec. What if um, so I'm thinking about your idea? So, so yeah. Let, let me delete. Let me delete this uh, stuff. So basically, uh, if we label this point here and uh, we draw the tangent there, basically the tangent there is, uh, is parallel to EF. Um, and then we could try doing the same thing if I did this, so. I, I wanna draw the triangle where the tan, oh, I'll show you guys. So yeah, this, this line passes through 
uh, the X center and hold on one sec. D, E, E, F, okay. So I want to draw the perpendicular bisector from P. So tangents. Oh no, I want and then this. So yeah, this triangle is going to be similar to DEF and So could we do a homophony? Let me see. I don't, yeah, those are not collinear, but maybe there's something else we can do. Let's try this. Oops. No. Yeah, I feel like this one's just really hard. I don't know if we're just missing something. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. see yeah or um do you think like berry centric coordinates or something would um yeah i don't know yeah there has to be a synthetic solution um Yeah, so KJ. So, 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 um, yeah, let me delete a bunch of stuff. So, yeah, I don't know if extending DE and EF and all that helps. Um, so, yeah. KJ is a perpendicular bisector of AI, and the same with KG and GJ. Um, all right. So 
So yeah, so if we um, if we let KJ, KG, and GJ meet IA, IB, and IC, um, we, we'd get like a homothety uh, with factor one half. It would be nice if X was like the in center of something. Are X, O, and N collinear? That would be crazy. No. So we know some stuff about like the sharky devil configuration. So like, oh, but that's that's the points of the in circle, not E and F. So dx is parallel to OIA. Um, All right, you guys want to try something new? All right, I will try a new problem. Let's see, what, um, what contest do you guys like? Do you want to try a APMO or? I think that's a decent one. Uh, Elmo, all right. I think I did a lot of ones from Elmo, but I'll see uh, if there's any. Um, I think there was a, I don't think I've done any from 2021, right? Yeah, Elmo goes way back. I should have done more Elmo problems probably. Um, so yeah, number one this year, I think I already did. Um, let's see, let's just pick a random one. Oops, sorry. Screen's frozen a little bit. This one looks interesting. How about this one? Maybe we could try a little bit easier of a one. Uh, C9 seems nice. C9, all right. Let me just make sure. Yeah, it looks kind of like Ricard's, right? The EF intersects the circle at X. Uh, BX and CD meet at M. That seems interesting. 
I'll go for it. So, yeah, let me just delete a bunch of stuff here. Oops, sorry. Didn't want to move it. I want to delete it. Um, uh, I thought you could hold down control and then select stuff, but maybe not. Okay, I'm just going to erase it one by one. All right. Uh, let me just space it out. Do this as fast as possible. All right. There we go. So we have a cyclic quad A, B, C, D. And uh, the diagonals meet at F. Uh, so, so A, B, and C, D meet at E. So I'm going to draw that first. So it's looking a little bit like for card. Um, let me maximize it. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be fun solving that problem uh, that we that we just did. I'll see if I can figure it out eventually. Um, the diagonals meet at F. Uh, EF meets the segment EF. Uh, so I guess that's kind of important, not the line EF. But the segment EF meets the circle um, at a point X. And then we draw BX and CX. Um, let me rename it. Bx and Cx, uh, we see where it meets Cd and Ab at M and N. So I'm going to uh, lazy. And we want to show M and N and BC concur with the tangent at X. So Um, let's check the chat. Oh, I'm not even going to check it. I want to, I want to figure it out myself. Um, but yeah, if any of you want to check the solution, yeah, feel free to take a look at it. But yeah, it's hard for a, a P5, right? It's really hard. Really hard. All right. <laughs> It'll be a fun, I'll, I'll try to see if I can solve it and make a video. Um, 
Interesting. Oops. All right. So we want to show B, C, M, N, and the tangent at X concur. This kind of feels like using Ricard's a bunch, right? So I should probably draw the intersection of B, C, and A, D. Um, and I think that would be the point at which they concur, right? Because that point, yeah, that point should be tangent at X by, by the polar, Ricard's polar theorem. So B, C, A, D, at the very least, yeah, B, C, A, D and the tangent at X, we know those concur um, by Bricard um, because E, F is the polar of G. So um, we just need to show M, N passes through G and maybe someone's already figured it out. Yeah, basically it says B, C, A, D, and M, N concur. Seems like Pascal's. Pascal's. But M and N don't lie on a circle. I mean, maybe it still is. Yeah, but... that's why we use Pascal. Uh. Um, maybe there's some stuff with harmonic conjugation. So basically, it's the same as showing. Yeah, it's Pascal. Okay. Um, oh wait, but is it easier than that? I mean, basically, we just want to show that B, H, C, and G are in harmonic conjugation. And that's just true by Ricard's theorem. So we, I don't even think we need Pascal's. Um, I think that's it. Basically, B, H, C, and G are in harmonic conjugate. Actually, um, hold on a sec. Or actually, are N, H, and D collinear? That would be, uh, th there's so many different ways to solve this problem. It's, it's uh, silly, but so, oh, oh no, I, I don't think NH and D are collinear. Okay, never mind. So, so I thought I had yet another way to solve it, but I do think that N, yeah, okay. X, let's see. So Sardar, maybe I'll, maybe I'll take both, both solutions. X, X, C, D, A, D. Um, so we have okay. So CX and AB meet at N. Oh yeah, yeah. Pascal's is like an instantaneous. So yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll just type up Sardar's solution because I think it's like the uh, most obvious. But yeah, now this is not that hard of a problem, I guess. Uh, let's see, let me do this super fast. Um, XXCDAB. 
um, we have that M, N, and G concur. Uh, M, N, and G are collinear. And that means M, N, uh, B, C, that solves it. All right. Yeah, I guess Elmo maybe was a little easier in like 2013. Um, let's see if there's any harder uh, problems that we can find. So that was G9. Um, let's see. Let's try, you guys want to try G13? Oops. Sorry about that. Uh, what? Ah, uh, I copied the. All right. Oh, whenever there's a less than sign, it doesn't copyright. So you have to copy everything before the less than and then after the less than. <laughs> it's, it's really weird. All right, I'm not gonna take time to LaTeX this problem up. I'm just gonna make sure the spacing is right so that it's not just all in one line. Um, so a, b is less than a, c, and then internal and external. Okay. So basically we draw the angle bisector and then we can draw the perpendicular to that. Oops. Ah, why won't this work? Oh, there we go. So, what? What? This is just going crazy. Cross my fingers that it works this time. All right, there we go. Sorry about that. All right. Let's maximize it. And yeah, I'll try to find harder problems next time. Maybe I'll do Elmo or, um, but yeah, it's hard to find difficult contests. Um, so D and P. So, so you can't choose together. What? You can choose the exam with vote every Monday. Uh, uh, there's an exam every Monday? Oh, yeah, World Online Olympiad Training? What? Uh, or, 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 or what, what uh, comes out every Monday? Every Monday, if someone wants, uh, he will uh, say an exam. Okay. He will suggest an exam. All right. So yeah. we vote between them. Oh, I think that would be awesome. Um, yeah, if, if every Sunday someone's or every Monday someone suggests an exam um, that they want to do, um, yeah, I think that would be great. Um, M is the midpoint of BC. Let's see. Uh, Q is, uh, so then we draw the circumcircle of APD. And Q 
is on arc AB. Okay, so we draw the tangent. Uh, sorry. Q. Uh, All right. Uh, QB meets the circle again at R. I'm gonna make this smaller. And the line through R perpendicular to BC. Uh, meets PQ at S. And we want to show that SD is tangent to the circumcircle of QDM. That's random, but interesting. Let me hide a couple things and then check the chat. Um, okay. All right, uh, R is the midpoint of arc PD. Um, it's, so how is R defined where QB meets it? Uh, it looks like it. So is uh, BQC a right angle? How is Q defined? Um, are you sure you're wrong? Let's, let's see. Oh, I think you're right. M MQ is tangent to APD, circle of APD. That's how we define it. So, okay, so MQ is tangent to the circumcircle of APD. And, oh yeah, E is going to be the center. So, since angle EQM uh, is 90, so, so yeah. MD times MB times MP equal to MB squared. Um, possibly. If I think that's true if if um, if C B D P is in harmonic conjugation. Yeah. So so yeah, no, that th that is a harmonic lemma. Yeah, because since B C D and P are in a harmonic conjugation, that's true. Um, so then BQC is 90 degrees. But wait, how does that... MD multiplied by MP equals to MB squared. 
So, so yeah, I agree with that. And MQ is tangent. Oh, and MQ is tangent. Okay. And so, yeah, so then, let's see. So, R, so that shows that R is the midpoint of RPD, all right? That makes sense. So yeah, I think that's most of the way there. Now, let's think. So we wanna show SD is tangent. We could try showing angle S, D, M. Um, oh, um, so it is uh, the angle chase. So okay. S, D, Q is uh, P, D, Q minus uh, P, D, S mm -hmm. is uh, P, D, Q minus S, P, D is uh, arc, arc, um, yeah, and uh, MQ is the tangent, so uh, the uh, angle QMD is uh, equal to arc uh, PQ minus arc uh, QD over two, over two. All right, I think we got this. So yeah, I think the angle chase you just said finishes it. Um, so, whoops. I guess even Elmo we do really fast. <laughs> Wow, but, but I guess it's like 2013, so the later Elmo problems are, are probably a little harder. Um, all right, so um, we have um, uh, AD bisects angle uh, BAC and um, and then also uh, angle PAB equals 90. And so that means that uh, BC, D, and P are in harmonic conjugation. And once we know that, um, then, then we have um, uh, MB squared equals MD times MP is equal to MQ squared. And um, then that is enough to show us um, that angle P, that QB bisects angle PQD. So um, we have angle, uh, let me just think how to write this. So um, it, it's, it's, it's basically an angle chase, but um, So, yeah, hold on, hold on just a second. So angle PQR, we want to show it's angle BQD, um, but BQD is BQM minus M minus DQM. Um, Hmm. So, so 
Okay, so so this is um, trying to think how the angle chase goes, but but I think this is enough to show. Um, well, well, okay, we we know angle EQM is is ninety. So uh, let let E be the midpoint of PD. Of, uh, of the circle APD. And then uh, angle EQM is 90. Um, so um, yeah, basically we wanna show PE P, E, B, and D, I'm getting a little confused here. I think P, E, D, and M, yeah, we wanna show P, E, D, and M are in harmonic conjugation. Um, but that's not true. Uh, let, let, let me go back to the chat, hold on just a second. So, Oh, you know what? Yeah, so we have MB squared is MD times MP, but how, how do we know that, um, how do we know that P, QB bisects PQD? How does that follow? Um, MQ equals uh, angle BQC is 90. How do we know angle BQ? Oh, because, okay, my bad. Uh, that was obvious, okay. So um, M MB equals MQ equals MC. Um, So angle BQC is equal to 90. And then, so, so since BC, D and P are in harmonic, are, are in harmonic conjugation, um, then that's how we know QB bisects it. So, um, QB bisects PQD. And then once we have that, um, so, so R is the midpoint of our PD. And okay, so, so so now it's now it's kind of just an angle chase. So we want to find angle SDQ and show it's equal to angle QMD. Um, so angle S angle uh, SDQ is angle PDQ minus um, angle PDS. Um, and angle PDQ, um, we want to show it's angle QMD and uh, QMD is, is 90 minus QEM. Uh, 
Um, so, 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 so this is 90 minus QPD. minus PDS. Um, which is, so that's 90 minus uh, two angle um, QPD. All right. We're almost out of time. I'm just gonna finish writing a few things. Ah, I gotta add the, the two backslashes. And that's, um, okay. So QMD, uh, it's, it's 90 minus QEM. Um, which, which is 90 minus two angle QPD. So, so SQD equals QMD and so it's tangent. So D and that means that SD is tangent to the circle QDM. All right, so we are out of time today, but uh, we got through a lot of problems. So I will try to um, find some harder problems for next time. And we also had a lot of participants. So this is really a lot of fun. Um, so thanks everyone for joining. Uh, like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Uh, have a good one.